please sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you, that's the first standing ovation I've ever got in England, to be honest. So, um, just so that some of you might not know who I am even after that wonderful video, um, I was captain of England when they were absolutely rubbish at cricket. No, none of this winning the World Cup stuff that they do now, okay? I was captain of England when they were officially ranked the worst side in the world in Test Match Cricket. And I've been asked here to come and talk to you about team building, creating a culture, um, and changing a mindset. And I guess um, that's what probably I'm remembered for, for English cricket. So how did we go about changing a team and changing a culture? When I played as a youngster, when I played for England, age 21, I was predominantly a county player. I played for Essex. Occasionally, I get rung up to play for this team. It's a little bit like English football has been up until recently. If you asked a lot of England footballers who would their team be, they would say Manchester United, Arsenal, Tottenham, etc. And occasionally, they play for England. That's why England at football, up until recently, have been very poor. There is no affiliation, no association with that team. You're not worried about the past and the history, and you're not worried about the future. You're representing your country so that when you do turn up, you turn up smart and you wear a suit and you look the part. And when you put on and you go out on that field, you look the part and you behave like England cricketers. So then we started creating 15, 16. We have to then select. How do you select the right individuals in a team? How do you work out who your characters are, who are your tough people? Have a look not what runs they're getting or what wickets they're getting, when are they getting them? At what stage in the game? Who's bowling? Who's batting? How difficult were the conditions? How much pressure were they under? In any team, you will have good guys, and I won't say bad guys, but not so good guys. Guys that would bend the rules, would stay out late, would do things differently, and they might be key people in your team, but they still do things differently. So you have to try and introduce, even though they might not be the best cricketers at the time, you might have to introduce people that would change the culture from within. Here, there is no such thing as a popular leader. If you're trying to be a popular leader, you're in the wrong business. There is no such thing, because if you're a popular leader, you are just telling people what they want to hear, and hence you carry on doing what you've always done. And if you carry on doing what you've always done, you will always get what you always got. Nothing changes. And you sit in that dressing room with your teammates around you on this journey, and you've won games of cricket. And you're not turning up anymore as an Essex boy that plays for England. You're turning up as an England cricketer that occasionally goes and plays for Essex. Thank you very much. Now I know why he is the captain he is, because there is a certain sense of uh, appreciation of what's happening in the larger picture. You were 90 when you got dropped, and again 93 when you got dropped. What kept you going? Uh, good question, really. I mean, I didn't have any choice because I had an, uh, an Indian dad that was driven to NASA, you'll play cricket. You're either going to be a doctor, and with my two Bs and a C at Durham University or whatever, I wasn't going to do that. Um, or oh, you're going to be a cricketer. And my dad, from the age of seven, took me down the Ilford Cricket School. I was brought up on the Chepok Stadium in Chennai, on the outfield there. Uh, my dad played uh, for Madras Cricket Club. So there was a culture of cricket in the family. My brothers played, my sister yeah. uh, used to field for us. So to a degree, there was no sense of, and it sounds a bit harsh, it sounds a bit Agassiz-like, but you know, um, there is no failure. You just pick yourself up and you go again. How do you balance the, you know, experienced pe between the experienced people and young talent? How do you balance in the team? How do you manage the team? Uh, what do you call the uh, motivation uh, when you were doing really well and you go into a situation where the pitches and the situations are very different and the same team does does not do really well. So what you have to do is work on your strengths, adapt. Again, this thing of taking people on that journey who are willing to adapt, learn to adapt, learn from the opposition. Also, have horses for courses and not be too sort of blinded by, I want this. The key to any cricket team or business or management is to be one game ahead. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Thomas.